Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll be finishing up the model of the Nintendo noise channel that I was working on last time. And there's just a few things that I want to fix about it. First of all, uh, we're using events to create an audio stream, which is really not the greatest way to go about things and it's also running at the wrong frequencies right now so it doesn't actually sound that much like the uh, actual Nintendo channel so today we'll fix both of those problems and we'll end up with something that sounds like this All right, so let's start with our project from last time. And um, so yeah, we're, we're creating this uh, sequence of events and it's really just not uh, ideal for uh, multiplying against an audio signal later on down the line. So what I wanna do is um, take this code that I'm using to create our noise sequence and store it in an event table. So I'm going to get rid of the clock oscillator and we're going to use an iteration module to um, run our feedback loop and then we'll store it in an event table and use an audio table um, that's sharing data with the event table to actually read out our data. And this is just going to give us a much cleaner sound. So we'll update our feedback loop using events from the iteration module now. So we'll trigger the value using the output and the separator using the gate output. So that um, separator is just used to initialize the feedback value to its initial state. Um, and the Nintendo noise channel is actually a loop that, depending on the mode that you're in, is either 32,767 or 31 samples long. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, have this iteration do the full uh, 32,000 um, samples here, and then uh, we'll store it all in an event table. And if we're in the mode that only needs the 31 samples, then we'll, uh, just read out the first 31 samples and ignore the rest. And I'll, I'll show you how this all works in just a minute. So we use the output of the iteration module to control the right position of the event table. And then we can use the output um, to control the value at that position. We need to set our table size so it can fit our entire sequence. And um, we need to trigger our iteration and we need a way to make the whole thing active just to make sure it works so I'm going to use a numeric module and set it to be always active and so there is one problem um, for some reason when you set an event table it changes the value range so just make sure you set the minimum back to negative one um, and then you can see the full waveform of the uh, noise sequence all right, so as I mentioned before, the Nintendo Noise Channel has two modes that it operates in. So we can mimic that by slightly editing our feedback macro. Um, and the two modes differ in which bits that they test in order to calculate the feedback. Um, right now I'm using this type knob here to give us a wide range of values that you can use. But in reality, the Nintendo Noise Channel allows you to either use a value of 1 or 6 here. So I'm just going to delete this knob and create an input to replace it. And we'll feed it a value to, of either 1 or 6, depending on the uh, position of a button. And this button I'll also use to trigger our iteration so that when we change modes, we automatically um, write the sequence of our new mode into the event table. 
So we'll need an order module, and we want to feed the feedback uh, macro first so that it has the right value when the iteration goes off. So we'll use a selector module, and um, we'll either be selecting a value of 1 or a value of 6, as I mentioned. And we can send that straight to the feedback macro. And then um, in the next output from our order module, we can trigger the iteration itself. And now we can flip between the two modes um, with a single button. All right, so let's just test this out. Everything seems to be in working order. Next, we want to create an audio table and link it to the event table so that they share data. So in the function tab of the event table properties, in the file section, find the save button and save the audio table. Um, you can save it as any file type. I like to use the native table file type. And you can choose any name here. And then go into the audio table in the same area of properties and load the same file back up. And our two tables will now share data. So when we edit one of them, the other one will automatically change as well. So now we need a way to read out of our audio table. And we want to do it so that we're reading at the same speed that the Nintendo would be generating um, this feedback. So I'm going to use a ramp oscillator. And we will set the amplitude to the length of our um, feedback loop, which, as I mentioned earlier, is either going to be 31 samples or over 32,000 samples. I always like to use a simple AR envelope in projects like these just so I can control when they're spitting out audio. Um, the Nintendo has a slightly more exciting uh, envelope but I don't really have time to make one of those today unfortunately. I do want to control the visible range of our audio table using the XR input and our type uh, button however and this will just um, depending on which mode we're in will give us a uh, full view of our waveform so we can look at the whole thing when we're in mode 0 but when we're in mode 1 we want to only be able to see the first 31 samples because that's all it uses after that they just start repeating and you can kind of, now we get a zoom in on our uh, waveform a little more, at least for mode one. All right, so next up we need to select the frequencies for our ramp oscillator. This is a bit convoluted, so bear with me. The Nintendo CPU clock um, has 1,662,000 207 cycles per second and the audio processing unit receives an event for every other um, tick of the master clock so we can divide this by two and then the noise oscillator is um, going to further divide it down depending on a frequency setting which is chosen by the user and there are 16 available frequencies to choose from. So I'm going to make a selector with 16 inputs. And um, we want to further divide down the um, huge frequency that we're working with right now. It's like 20 times over our sampling rate. So the um, at the highest speed, We'll be taking our clock and dividing it by four. So every fourth APU clock is going to change um, the value of our linear feedback shift register. 
And once we've decided the amount that the noise channel is going to divide by, that's um, how frequently our noise channel is getting updated with a new value. But that's not the frequency of our oscillator. The frequency of our oscillator is the frequency at which we're updating our value divided by the length of the sequence in samples. Um, and so we'll divide this by the length of the sequence in samples. We'll end up with a frequency that we can actually use for something. Um, otherwise, we just have frequencies of like 200,000 hertz, which is just way above what we can ever do anything with. So I'm just going to duplicate this uh, divide by 4 function a bunch of times here so that we can um, have inputs for all of our selector inputs. And then we'll fill in the appropriate values. Um, like I said, there are 16 values you can choose that determine the frequency of the noise channel. And I'm just going to do it at double speed here because it's tedious to do and even more tedious to watch. Um, you can get the numbers that I'm using from a table at the website that I got all the information that I'm using for this tutorial at. It's called uh, wiki.nesdev.com and it's got just a great resource on how the audio processing unit in the Nintendo works and um, just gives you pretty much a way to completely emulate it if you have the patience and the time and the know-how. So if you're interested in some of the stuff that I'm leaving out of this tutorial, uh, most notably the envelope, I don't think there's anything else we're really missing here, um, you can check out that website and it has a full description of every aspect of the Nintendo. Just check out the audio processing unit section. All right, so that's uh, the frequency of our ramp oscillator, and we can uh, supply the amplitude with the length of our sequence, which we've already got chosen with this selector, selector here. And we only need to look at one of these tables at a time, really. And let's just make sure that everything works. And one more thing I think you probably want to do is turn on interpolation in the function tab of the audio table properties. Uh, you can definitely hear the difference. And I think it's probably closer to the reality um, coming out of the Nintendo, but I don't have one to test with, so I'm not sure. Once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. Um, next time I'll be doing a video on the pulse wave channel of the Nintendo, so make sure to tune in.